What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. We got some pretty big announcements in this video. We're just gonna start right off the bat with announcement number one. I believe Chris's truck is getting transported today. Again, if you guys saw in the previous videos, Chris's truck has officially been sold and it is going to, I believe, Wisconsin. So keep an eye out for it. You'll probably see it popping up on the internet more now because Chris never posted on Instagram or pretty much anywhere. So you should be seeing a lot more of this truck hopefully soon. And then we've got Sergio over there and we've got a very, very important something. Alrighty, so you guys can see clearly marked in the box behind me, we've got a set of vlog bumpers, which are, you know, vlogs no stranger to the channel. But one thing I don't think I've ever shown is what these things look like when they show up. The last set, we actually had Elevated Motorsports Transport down for Danny for his truck for SEMA. The set that we did for the Denali, I don't remember if I was actually filming when we unboxed that set, but one of the reasons, in my opinion, vlog bumpers are the best is this right here. The way they transport them. They do it very, very well. With Sergio's help, unscrewing the million screws that they use in the top of this thing. You think it's gonna secure package here? more in the, in the screws than the, the actual bumper. Wait, maybe. No, I think we're good. I think we're good, Sergio. Don't drop any of these screws or the guy that buys Chris's truck is uh, <laughs> gonna get it with a flat tire. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, look at that. So here's what they look like. A flog does not mess around. So obviously they build all of these crates in-house, then they go ahead and put these braces or these mounting points inside all out of two by fours, and they bolt the bumpers to it. That way these things are not rattling around uh, when they're getting you know shipped because God knows what these things go through you can see we've got looks like somebody did a burnout on this crate at some point in shipping so they really make sure that the bumpers arrive to you extremely safe and then we've got all of the accessories right through there in the middle look at this look at flog is changing the game guys they don't just do truck stuff anymore if you guys don't know they're in the side-by-side -side market they're doing all kinds of cool stuff they've got a whole new toolbox fuel tank system design all that uh, Flog's really doing some pretty big things. Sergio, can you help me on both these? No. Oh, now you're out? No. You saw what you wanted to see? Yeah, I just wanted to see. <laughs> Alrighty, so inside the box, number one, we've got the spike lug nut covers. These are what goes over top of the bolts, and I will explain more on how these flog bumpers work when we go to put them on the truck, but it's a really slick method that they came up with. We've got the license plate light, some double-sided tape, a bunch of hardware, some brackets for some LED lights. Box number two has the billet aluminum tugs. These are the tow hooks. These things are freaking awesome. It is one solid piece of billet. You can see the machine marks on there milled out. Uh, they do not weigh a ton, but they are freaking strong. Four bolts to attach them. Uh, these things are sick. We're actually gonna be powder coating those as well. And then box number three has a thank you letter with some painting tip. Also came with a sweet hat, bottle opener, and a pen that says made in the USA because flog bumpers are 100% made in the USA. And some stickers. You guys know I'm a sucker for number one, a thank you letter, but I'm a sucker for a free hat. Now we are gonna unbolt these until we take them over to Swift. That way they're not rattling around and this is like the easiest way to transport them is as you see them. But there's gonna be certain parts that are gonna be getting powder coated black and then the rest of the tire shells are gonna be getting powder coated white. Now I made the mistake with my very first set of bumpers um, and I really, I was guided in the wrong direction. I went to a couple of paint shops and I was like, hey, I wanna get these painted. I was like, do you think we should get them powder coated first? And all the paint shops were like, no, that's not a thing. And then years later, <laughs> now that's like a thing. I was a little bit ahead of my time apparently. People thought I was weird. But one of the things with aftermarket bumpers is there's a lot of inside corners and crevices and curves. And a painter is not really gonna be able to get in there as well as you might think. I mean, they can try, but there's gonna be runs if they really try to glob the paint on up in there. Whereas powder coat, it's electronically charged. The powder is gonna kind of float its way into certain corners and stuff that a paint gun might not do. So the way we do them is it's better to get these things just completely powder coated front and rear and as close of a color as you can get to what you're gonna be putting on the truck and then take it to a paint shop and have them do the exact color match over top and then if there's certain spots they can't get into if your colors are very very similar you'll never know but it also takes a little bit of stress off the painter really having to try to get paint into certain areas and causing runs and all that now i just realized we've gone this so far into this video and i have not explained exactly what's going on here and i should probably do that i was hoping to have the truck here but i don't so i say this every year and i really need to hold myself to it but i never learn we are doing another last minute sema build, uh, but we have a head start this time. We are officially going to be taking Papa Rhino's F450 to SEMA. Now I get asked all the time about going to SEMA and a lot of people wanna to go to SEMA and I always recommend getting a build manager. This year we are working with Elevated Motorsports. If you guys want, check them out on Instagram, check out their website. If you are interested in going to SEMA, 
hit them up. Hiring a build manager is just the absolute way to go when it comes to SEMA because they take most of the headache out of the entire process. So if you're interested, I highly recommend doing it. When we built that truck, one of his dreams was for it to go to SEMA. Like he's saw my truck go to SEMA, he's seen all the other vehicles to go to SEMA. Uh, he was really excited about the idea of SEMA. We just never ended up taking it. I don't remember. Actually, we did the Bronco last year. I think that's why. But for whatever reason, we didn't take it. And I'm not a big fan of taking trucks we've already built to SEMA. Cause I like to kind of debut new stuff that we do mainly for the channel, not so much for the people at SEMA. Um, it's mainly for you guys. We have an opportunity this year to go with our homies at Flog uh, to SEMA. So I figured, you know what, let's do it. Let's take the 450, let's make Papa Rhino's dreams come true, get to do some more cool stuff to that truck. But like all my dumb ideas, we have zero time to do it. Uh, thankfully, these things showed up today. That's why I'm not, they're going straight to powder coat and I should probably stop talking to take them to powder coat right now. Cause once they're done with powder coat, then they got to go to paint. Uh, we've got, Full interior getting done for the 450, lighting. Uh, we've got a really cool surprise that's going in the back of the truck that I'm not gonna tell you guys about. But we really don't have any parts except for bumpers yet. So here we go to another last minute SEMA build because I thought that was gonna be a great idea and because if I didn't need any more stress in my life, well, here we go. So let's see if we can pull it off again this year. We successfully made it to Swift. I'm gonna start pulling this all apart. We'll get it taken in, and then the next time we see these bumpers, they will be powder coated, and they're off to paint. Okay, we are back at Swift, picking up all of the powder coated pieces for the bumpers. We've got all of the accent pieces, the brackets. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of stuff. The old 6.0 is just full of things. These are actually brand new. Uh, I don't think anybody has seen these on any flog bumpers yet. And then, of course, in the back, We've got the white powder coated bumpers. Now we need to head to the paint shop because again, you can't really perfectly match powder coat to paint unless it's like black or something very simple. But with the Fords and their like tri coat and the sparkle and all that, it's got to get painted to match. All right, and we've come full circle in this video. We are back at the shop and we're actually about to do the first modification to Papa Rhino's truck. It is sitting right here in this box and it is from our friends over at Aaliyah Leather. I'm very, very excited to be working with Aaliyah Leather. From what I've seen online, their stuff is just top notch when it comes to interiors on vehicles. Like I'm talking some pretty high end luxury stuff. If you guys aren't familiar with Aaliyah Leather, check them out on Instagram, check out their website. They have put together some masterpieces for some vehicles and they have so many options. I was very overwhelmed when we were kind of planning this out and we were very rushed because again, this is a whole thing's last minute, like most of my SEMA builds end up being. So I came up with a concept really quickly, just hoping when it showed up, it's actually gonna look really sick and well, probably see through this plastic. Maybe you can't, cause it's kind of reflective. The seats have shown up. Uh, everything is in this vacuum sealed bag. Let's put this on the ground. We'll crack it open. Maybe. Breathe. Breathe, there we go. Get some air in you. Oh, well, I guess we just take that off. We'll wait for this to come to life. Ooh, these things are beautiful. Look at this, y'all. So we went with like a diamond stitch pattern, but with an accent diamond stitching in red, and then we've got perforation in between the diamonds. Now you guys are probably thinking, you know, hey, Rana, it's a 450's a platinum. You know, it's got a nice interior. Honestly, guys, I've never been a big fan of Ford's fake leather, whatever they call their actual leather interiors. Um, it's always kind of looked just funky and cheap to me. Even on the Platinums, the Limiteds look a little bit better, but there's just something a little bit off about it in my opinion. So I like to do upgrades like these to vehicles. And if you guys have ever sat on diamond stitch seats, they are much more comfortable than non-diamond stitch because obviously you have these pockets of foam that are nice and squishy. When you have a bunch of different ones, instead of just being on one solid piece of foam that just kind of mushes in with your back, you have all of these that give you a better support and a better feel. These things are super sick. And again, these are getting put on today. We've got Juan coming over. Juan did all of the seats in the Bronco for me. So we haven't seen him since last SEMA, but I am excited to have these thrown on. And then of course, we've got to have the trademark work for it in the headrests. So we've got these beautiful headrests. Look at that, they even did a little bit of the red accent stitching around the backside of the headrest. Why red, you ask? I don't really know. I just felt like we should do some type of accent color on this thing. So I chose red. I think it's cool. Papa Rhino is on his way here with the F450. I'm curious what he thinks about the seats. So we'll get his reaction when he shows up. You ready to see your seats? Everybody wants to see your reaction. That's gonna be your actual seats. There it is. You like it? Yeah. Well, as you guys can see, Papa Rhino's very animated. Uh, but we got the 450 here. 
I went and gave her a quick rinse off before she goes into the shop for a couple of weeks. Like we even really have that much time. Uh, I'm walking around the truck. There's a few things that I'm noticing. There's a decent amount of rock chips on the front grill, which I'm worried about having time to fix the rock chips. Um, you guys know when we show up to SEMA, we're usually some of the like top notch, most perfect guys when it comes to like, you could not really pick anything apart on any of our builds. This year might be a little different. This truck has been a dedicated work truck for almost two years at this point. She's got some wear and tear on her. However, I think it's kind of cool. We're just gonna roll up with a work truck, you know? To some people, this is a super flashy show truck to us. This is a work truck. But I'm gonna do my best to fix as many rock chips as we can in the time span that we have. A lot of you guys have mentioned it in some other videos you notice that sometimes this piece is missing off the bumper sometimes it's there when you have front air ride you really have to pay attention to where your ride height is and sometimes Paul Brown says the truck gets mad and like goes down and he doesn't really notice it and then he turns and well he has successfully ripped off the bumper cap normally he catches it and pulls it up off the ground but apparently the other day it fell off and he ran it over doesn't matter though because those bumpers are coming off forever alrighty y'all Juan has showed up in his super sweet box truck outfitted just for this occasion we've lowered the bags in the truck all the way down try to get this to somewhat of a manageable height to pull out these seats Juan is gonna go ahead and remove all of the seats this guy's a master at doing this he makes it look so easy <laughs> I think we pulled the Bronco ones out in like 10 minutes with the lift in the way it's a little nicer outside huh Juan, we, nicer. we got a little more room to work Juan is cruising along, as you guys can see, he's a master of just pulling these seats out of this truck super, super quick. He makes it look so freaking easy. Uh, we've got the front seats already done. As the truck kind of sits and heats up and goes through a couple of heat cycles, all of the leather will tighten up a little bit. You can see it's got a little bit of some folds and stuff. He goes through and steams everything, so you'll, if you notice any water or anything like that on the seats, like right there, it's from where he goes through once he installs them, he steams everything, and then again, as everything kind of dries up, most of the wrinkles and the folds and all that should go away. He is now moving along to getting the back seats done. Oh, look at that little, little baby subwoofer back there. I think these things look freaking awesome though. Like huge, huge upgrade from the factory Ford stuff. Check out this pretty slick little setup he's got for getting these uh, headrests on, because these things are a pain in the butt. So it puts that plastic bag over it, creates suction to shrink down the foam with a vacuum. Shoot, that one you don't even have to, huh? <laughs> Slipped on. Yeah, that, that one was an easy one. We can jump in there real quick. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a tight squeeze, but we got the truck back in the shop. The interior is, whew, she is looking beautiful. All nice and finished up. Juan did an awesome job. Check this out. Hopefully it's not too dark. We know GoPro suck in the dark. It's nighttime outside, obviously, so we're relying on some shop lighting. There we go. Let's get a little, little bit of light in here. Check the beautiful interior out, guys. This looks so, so sick. I am absolutely in love with this. Turned out freaking awesome. Look at the back seats. And again, I'm sorry it's so dark in here. Let me see if we can... Do a little, little phone light. Does that, does that do anything? Or probably doesn't do anything at all. Uh, but yeah, these seats turned out awesome. Again, a huge thank you to everybody over at Aaliyah Leather for getting these all made up for us in record time. Now, one of the things Juan noticed when he was installing these is on the sides, he said they used 
half inch material. And he said, normally most seat companies in the center pieces, they use a half inch because that's where all your weight is. And then they use like thinner quarter inch stuff on the sides. To me, that would mean being that you have half inch on the sides as well. You're not going to get those like gnarly, destroyed, creased, looking like crap edges when you're where you hop in and out of that you see on most vehicles, driver seats. We are going to leave this out in the sun for a day or two, let the cab heat up, and then that's going to shrink everything back down from the installation process. These things turned out fan freaking tastic. Oh. I'm just excited to have one thing done on this vehicle already. And I say already, like we have a bunch of time, but we don't have any time. And because we haven't seen him on the channel in a while, Chris, everybody's been asking about you. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you feeling now that you, uh, you sold your truck, man? How's it feel? Pretty sad, man. Pretty sad, I miss her. You wanna buy her back? Yeah. Oh, okay. Half the price. Or maybe buy new ones. Oh, okay, okay. If anybody's got any suggestions of what you think Chris should get, make sure you guys leave it down in the comments below. Maybe take it to SEMA. Oh, you wanna do a SEMA build next year? How's it look? Nice. Primo? Dang, I'm slam that thing with authority, huh? All righty, y'all. So here's to kicking off another last second SEMA build. You ready for the stress? Uh, see you in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, it's no stress for you. Chris just shows up to Vegas and hangs out and parties with us. We'll see what happens. We still got a lot of parts we need. We got a lot of finishing we have to do to those parts. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a mission. We're gonna be right at the last second. Well, hold on, Chris has a question. Chris, what's your question? Just throwing the bumpers on. Two, two idiots garage? No. Oh. Yeah, we only chop up your truck, not yeah. not, 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 not expensive trucks, you know? <laughs> what do you do with these? Uh, little rock chips? No, this is a working man's truck. We're bringing a working man's truck to SEMA. Is that what you put on the side? Yeah. Rock chips and all. This is a working man's truck. But with that, we're going to wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like and get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you got to be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. You, you got it. Come on. Roll the outro. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.